So we've had our fair share of crazy map mods on this channel over the years, ranging anywhere from the shortest map ever, the longest map ever, and even a map with 15 lanes. But how about one with 100 lanes? And that's exactly the kind of map we have here. Took the model of a traffic intersection and turned it into a 100 lane map. And to make this map was not easy, I had to go into the map editor and draw all 100 lanes individually, uh, while also adhering to the traffic rules, right side only. And this was the result at the end of the editing session, and this is what we have now. A very satisfying looking uh, start menu here, and also if you take a look, that is a, quite a lot of road spikes. So one road spike for every lane means we got 100 road spikes to help us survive the early game. And also, you might be wondering why I'm doing Sada for this run here, even though she has like almost no range. She would be probably one of the worst options. Well, I'm not necessarily here trying to win in the easiest fashion, but rather to win in the most fun fashion, and uh, I think there's a couple of towers slash heroes in this game, where if there's many lanes, their abilities could get pretty hectic. So, uh, if you guys saw in the longest lane, you know, the no escape map that looped like 100 times, we had the Spear of the Forest, fine ability, do insane amounts of damage, and it'll probably be the same thing here, so... Uh, I don't know if I want to try that, that out, maybe as a victory lap, I can just show you at the very end, but yeah, Sada. I haven't quite shown you guys how Sada's sword charge works, well, you'll definitely see in this one. Anyways, uh, also to make things a little bit harder for myself, I am not going to be going for uh, any farming. So we're going to see if we can beat 120 rounds with just the raw money we make from the uh, no rounds. Because, yeah, again, the fact that there's so many road spikes means I could probably just, like, read and stay in my early game, and that would snowball pretty hard. But again, proof that this is 100 lanes. You can see uh, lanes are kind of traveling in their own different path. And some of them are even a little bit... Uh, not quite online. We got some pretty bad drivers here in the balloons world. Some balloons are just traveling in the middle of the lanes, but again, as long as they're not going the wrong way, there shouldn't be uh, too many exits. Actually, um, we, maybe we should add some stop signs or some traffic lights to this, because yeah, they seem to just... Everybody seems to want the right away, eh? Anyways, in terms of funny or strong strategies, it's gonna be mortar, right? If you get a biggest one straight in the intersection, then it's pretty much game. Kind of think of this as, like, Main Street, but thicker. Main Street is a BTD5 map for those who are unaware. So this is just one where it's harder to catch things in the middle. That's why I have a Mortar. And I kind of want to go for a pretty stuff Mortar. Definitely a lot less reliable, though, in terms of stunning. So I'm going to need to get something else to, I guess, support us in the late game. Well, that's the main strategy I want to go for. Right now, with this thing in the center, it's still kind of missing balloons, especially when they straddle the right side of the lane. SMH my head. Maybe Shell Shock will help with that? Yeah, this is getting pretty sketchy, all right? The thing is, our uh, road spikes are still very, very healthy. I think each road spike pre game prep uh, eats up 21 red balloon equivalent, so that's 2100 balloons we can eat with spikes, which makes sense why they're still so healthy. This lane to the game. I'm just gonna get Helipad, though, again, just to save, save lives and. I don't know. There's very few towers that can have enough range to be able to, you know, catch all balloons, so... I feel like we just gotta employ the military towers. Or the towers you can just see over everything. So now we got a helicopter trying to, uh, control. Police the crowd, police the intersection. Shooting down all targets that run the red light. Which in this case is pretty much every single balloon. <laughs> I feel like even the heli, we're still kind of struggling, so... How about I try a bouncing bullet? This is also kind of risky, because I have no idea how it's gonna do when... Let's come from all lanes. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure they nerfed the uh, bouncing rate or the bouncing distance. So now you need the balloons to be even closer in order for you to get the bounces correctly. And let me just use a leaping sword here to save some more spikes. Let's get this. Make sure to out buff it too, and here comes round 40. I will try to see. Oh, yeah, it's definitely gonna pop. But let's see. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. So I didn't want the mob to eat up all the uh, road spikes there, so. I had to make sure to time the uh, Leaping Sword ability so that it one-shot the Serams, and we did it. We did it, Reddit. Now let's go for a big one before I lose all my spikes. We got the big one, boys. I'm gonna need to give it some attack speed, that's for sure. And some camo. So let's make sure to do the good old Pat's Dead double discount. Jungle Drums, and then turn this one to uh, camo detection. Just like that, we've successfully gotten through the early game. Now I'll go for 2 for out buff to make more to shoot you faster. And we don't even need to use Sonic's abilities anymore for mobs, so that's great. Oh, and hang on. I just lost road spikes on the top side. Uh, it must have been the camo ceramics popping into uh, fast blends and then the mortar couldn't catch up. 
So I believe it's time to start, yeah, taking things slowly. In fact, I think I should get, like, a, a dart ship or something, Apache. I feel like something like that would help before I get biggest one, because it's still a long, a long ways away. So I'll, I'll get that, I'll get that. Yeah, this is going to be harder than I thought with no income generating. Uh, this Harley probably doesn't have camo. I'll find a way to do with that later, I guess. Let's Leaping Sword. And I'm still dead. Oh, hold on. Why don't I just do the following? I can just get a Mob Shove, so I can deal with one at a time for the mid-game, at least. That still doesn't quite solve the problem of things leaking, but it does solve our more problem, so I'm okay with that. And hey, do you see what we have unlocked now? The Sword Charge Laser Gents. Should we use it? Maybe for a hard round. Uh, how about now? I know it's not hard, but... <laughs> there it is, in case you guys are curious. That's a hundred Sawdust coming at you right at once. Now that's the dream scenario right there. All bow down to our Lord and Savior, uh, the Mob Shov. Now, since I already got Mob Shov, I might as well go for, for Comanche, because that's such a great option now. I'll do 105 for damage. I'll deal with the Camos. Hopefully we're fine against Camos, but yeah. Comanche Mortar's actually a pretty good mid game now. Maybe we can save it for our biggest one straight up. And here comes Ceramics? Holy crap. But well, I think we're dead here. Actually, no. Comanche saved us, but yeah. This is where you can really see it. That each Ceramic coming in has basically their own wave. Just watch wave 2 here. Here they blow by the intersection. I'll probably just use Sword Charge for wave 3 here. Yeah, let's just make it easier for ourselves. There we go. Thank you, Sada, for uh, slicing the balloons. 75 is also around I shouldn't dig around with and just use Sword Charge. Yeah, yeah, I think my Comanches went away. Let's just go ahead and get rid of it. Should be fine for 76. Yeah, big one got so many, so many stuns there. So yeah, all we had to do was survive the uh, sketchy early game of Sada. And now, she honestly might just be one of the best heroes for this. Also, uh, I used that a bit late, whatever, that's fine. Got biggest one. I lost a couple lives and almost all my road spikes. The only ones remaining now were basically uh, ones where mobs can't reach them. Because I'm pretty sure BP is coming and just ate up some of the road spikes on the opposite side. Yeah, what's next? Well, first off, overclock, that is for sure. And I don't know, probably just support and stuff like just stalls rounds so that I can use Sword Charge to beat every round. That sounds like a pretty good strategy. Just try to stall and slow it as much as you can. And then Sword Charge at the very end to clean everything up. And with that said, I think we should occupy the left side of the land now because Sauna's feeling a little bit lonely. So let's go ahead and double discount and get a more blue. I guess we'd also benefit from a downdraft, so let's get that too. Uh, don't know if we're fine against DTs, but let's see. Oh, no, 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 no. Not even close. Because, re right, remember, the Mob Shove doesn't have uh, the cam walk rate on it. I'll just get a Mob Glue and now we're fine. But yeah, that's super sketch. Well, I guess a main mob wouldn't hurt it, and a Sabo too. So let's go ahead and get that for 93 and 95. Here's 93. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm gonna need to use Sword Charge, I guess. Yeah, let's just make these rounds nice and easy. Oh, yeah, and don't forget, level 20, you get Sword Charge three times, so think about that. I mean, if it's literally one-shotting the boons and one swipe, I actually don't see uh, how much better three will be. Should I just use it, by the way? Yeah, you know what? Sure. I guess we're banking on the fact that I don't need it, or Sword Charge will come up. The cooldown is actually pretty fast. If only there was water in this map, but unfortunately, uh, instead of adding some nice pawns, uh, they've just decided to add advertisements to the bottom of the map here. How unfortunate. But on that note, maybe I'll check it out. I don't know. Anyways... We actually were able to survive 95 pretty well there, which is Sabo timing, so that's good. Okay, and here comes 98. This is... I'm not sure how I want to play this out. Maybe I'll Sword Charge early, but don't beat 98. Like, just destroy all the ZMGs and then have this to work with, yeah. And then I get a Sword Charge 99, you know what I mean? Or actually, no, I don't want a Sword Charge 99 because I want to beat the bad, right? Or maybe I could Sword Charge, like, one half of 99, also, I couldn't even be 98 there. How bad? How sad is that? But as I was saying, since she swipes three times, I guess I lied earlier and this is actually useful. Also, uh, did I really not activate this early enough? Come on, downdrafts. Yeah, I really need some more reliable ram damage, but there's nothing I, like, I can't just... Maybe I can door gunner. Hmm. What do you guys think about door gunnering an arctic wind? Slash snowstorm. That sounds pretty funny. But is it really worth spending 40k just for that? But anyways, yeah. I'll Sabo now. Don't die, don't die. Let's just stall the round out. So that everything is out first, and then... Wait for it, now. One, two, 
three swipes, and yep, that just annihilated the mob there. That basically just popped the bad. Two swipes. Simple as that. Okay, now we're approaching real scary rounds where I can't quite stall the rounds out for everything to come out. Uh, let's see. So we've got mob glue for three of the four intersections. Honestly, I'm gonna try called arms instead. I mean, who doesn't want the uh, global 50% attack speed and pierce to everything? Even then, still super sketchy. I'll do Sabo 2 on top of that. How slow do we need the wounds to be for this to freaking work? Uh, I'm dead now? Yeah, I'll use it now. Ah. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, Sword Charge now. Did we get everything? No, we missed a couple. Yeah, this wave is super duper long. Can we at least... We should be able to deal with one at a time, right? Yeah, okay, there we go. Hopefully I didn't make the wrong choice going for a call to arms, but it feels like I did. Because uh, I may need more than just biggest one for these rounds. Well, I do have CT up again, so... Uh, should be able to... Uh, Hold the line here. Hold the line. The stall for Sword Charge, but do I want to use it immediately? I don't know. It's super sketchy using Sword Charge at the very end the very end of rounds, but I have to. I just have to find a way to beat this part. That's way too many Serams, right? Oh, no. Somehow I'm alive. As long as we have enough attack speed, the stone is actually uh, keeping everything in the middle. No shit, Sherlock. But you know what I mean. All arms is pretty epic now. And it timed out. Let's try this again, and it feels like I'm dying because I don't have Sword Charge. Alright, remember? Sword Charge was activated for the first 5 seconds so I could stall for the ability, and now I'm dead. Okay, yeah, this might have been a little bit harder than I thought. Okay, time to try something really stupid. We're gonna get 4 down drafts for each of the lands. And see if we can just stall for Overclock. Come on. Got it? And... Uh, I got called arms. I can't believe it worked, guys. Thou shall not pass the down drafts. Yeah, that's how broken they are. That's why I think a lot of people regard them as S tier, basically. Absolutely lovely. I didn't even need to use uh, the sword charge for 105. Or for 104. I definitely need it for 105, it seems. Okay, so let's just sword charge here. And we've made it to 106. Yeah, right now it's just super important to have a bunch of abilities up. Just slow down those GTs. Come on, Sabo. Ah, just missed it by half a second. Okay, we should be good this time. I have two Sabos now. I'll probably just get three for permanent Sabo or four of them. We're just going to full on stall at this point, guys. Only DPS basically being Sada, Sword Charge, and the biggest one to slow things down, to stun things. Then I go ahead and just Sword Charge this round. Yeah, basically Sword Charge, as long as I have a bunch of abilities ready for next round. So I had like Sabo, Called Arms, and, and Leaping Sword. At the helm. Yep. Just clear out 108 again. And I think we're getting the hang of it now, guys. One, three lives. Uh, I guess I'm taking it if I survive. Sure. I can survive this round without a sword charge. So that's nice. I'm not going to take any chances for 111 here. Let's just end it off. Holy crap, that lag. That's when you know things are getting a little bit out of hand. There's seven more rounds to go, but each round's taking like five years at this rate. I don't want to sword charge because this round is pretty easy. Okay, good. Should have gotten this a lot earlier, that's for sure. But we have a Shattering Shells now, and right with Knowledge, he actually defortified DT as it is. Pretty cracked. Imagine working like that all the time. Uh, I think I'll use another sword charge here, and now what should we go for Spirit of the Forest? I did say I want to stick around with that earlier, although I don't quite have the money to do so, and even with sword charge, I still don't make it alive this round. Okay, let's Sword Charge now. And hopefully what's left of 115 is not too much to work with. Overclock. And yeah, we're good. The thing is, though, again, Spear of the Force doesn't do anything until using ability, so... It'll actually make our defense way worse if I had to sell stuff for it. I'll Sword Charge this round, yeah, for sure. Uh, it might be scary because there's DTs this round, but I have five Sabos. Yeah, we gotta make sure to call the arms when there's no ability up. Uh, Leaping Sword 2. I need Overclock on my bigger one. There we go. Got it. And I don't have Called Arms or Sword Charge. Okay, this might be a bit tough. Okay, let me add a Snowstorm to the mix. This actually might help. Uh, if I freeze it now. I might need multiple Snowstorms, though. Or is just one good? No, no, we're good. We're good. Okay. So, ideally... Uh, I'm dead again. Ideally, I'd beat this round without using Sword Charge. Because I guess I kind of want all three bats to be out on the screen before using... 
the ability, because so using it for both parts of 118 might be a little bit sketchy, if you know what I mean. Uh, let's overclock again, and then call the arms now. Call the arms, call the arms. Go, go, go. I don't think it's actually possible to beat all of this without a leaping sword. Yeah, they're leaking all at once, damn. Okay, I've tried too many times and I can't do this. So let me just, uh, I'll, I'll just sword charge. And, uh, crap. These two swipes actually don't kill a bad. That is a problem because I don't have any other bad damage. Well, I tried. But not even with a broken sword I can do it. Okay, let's see if it's possible to get the uh, Spear of the Force ability in time. I'll sell a couple of you for you. Yeah, because remember it comes up with 75% cooldown, but I still don't know if that's fast enough. Oh, it's so close. I, ha I have it. I have it. Uh, if I use it now... Oh, it still leaks. Okay, I've gone 051 this time. Come on, spam the ability. Yeah, it's still it actually doesn't do enough damage. Surprisingly. Uh, last try. We'll see if Call Arms does anything, I guess, when combined. Otherwise, that's a GG. And, yep, only 20k damage, somehow. Oh, yeah, I should know it's not 100 stacks, because it's only on one lane. So that would only be 25 stacks of mines, which isn't, I guess, as strong uh, as it seems. Anyways, that's it. Still a good run. Hope you enjoyed the showcase of Thick Main Street. And again, any other crazy ideas for map mods? Let me know. See you guys later.